Hi everyone, this is Brittany Bond and welcome back to the podcast. Um, whew, I am having so many emotions today and normally I like make a podcast when everything is all figured out and I understand what's going on in the universe and then I just realized like that is not real life <laughs> and I'm kind of done um, waiting to feel like I have it figured out before I share it with you because a lot of these podcasts are also just for me to like reflect back on myself and in that reflection I hope that it's like helping I know it's helping you and the collective so I feel like it's also really great to just share with you and I have no fucking clue what's going on and things are actually really bothering me and today one of the things that's very much bothering me is um they are destroying the nature here on Koponyong um so Something to know is that, like, you know, in the world, we grow up and the nature has already been kind of destroyed or subjugated, which means, like, put in, suppressed into a certain place. Like, you can only grow this big and we're, you know, like, we're putting a tree in a park and, like, that's it. Like, there's not really a lot of wild nature left in the world. And here on Kopenhagen is one of the few places, this tiny island off the coast of Thailand, this little forgotten place for most of the timeline, has been um, a very rare gem of nature that has been protected from the molestation of masculine energy coming in and just shoving it into place of whatever they want. And now since COVID, it has been come known to the world. Um, and I've been here before COVID, during COVID, and after. And before and during COVID, it was just like this beautiful, wild nature. And there was just like the Thai people here had, have most of them have never lived off the island. So they don't really know any different. Like they grew up in an environment where like nature has always been abundant. And they haven't experienced consumerism or even like... I guess wealth a lot of them haven't experienced like a lot of financial wealth so for them having foreigners come in and offer them a lot of money for their land is like that is like new and exciting for them and I feel like they don't know that once that's gone it's like gone <laughs> like they're almost like children in a way of like they haven't grown up and seen how mankind has destroyed nature and destroyed a lot of the beauty and so they're just kind of like innocently giving away their land. Anyways, this morning I woke up. So there's like this big meadow in the back of our house. Um, like our, our house is like all windows on one side and it just opens into like this deep nature and it's like wild and jungle. And I've lived here for four years. I've had this place, space for four years and I've lived in it full time for like two years. And um, before that it was like a community space. So we had it for the community. And this morning, like, these uh, middle-aged foreigner ladies like, just come up, and they, like, know me. Apparently, Everyone knows me on the island, so they're like, oh, you're Brittany, right? We're going to rent the land here, and, like, da, 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 and can you give them information about it? And they're just super excited, and I'm my head, like, my whole heart is just, like, crying out because I'm like, you're just going to destroy all the nature that we look at every day and connect to and the trees that I love, and I give so much energy, and I receive so much energy from and like my inner little girl was just like really sad because I was like like everyone's just coming here and they want a piece of paradise and they don't realize that like once they all get their little pieces of paradise individually like there's no more paradise left <laughs> for like Kopanyang for like Mama Kopanyang everyone is so individually taking care of themselves which is a very masculine energy instead of the feminine energy of like how is this helping the collective how are we collectively collaborating to make sure we're protecting this so that it doesn't go away and i know i'm not the only one who feels this like there's other of us who are very awake and like sensitive souls in the timeline that write to me and say like yeah this is i go through this suffering too and at the same time i had this spiritual reading done by an amazing woman and she told me like you know mom like the mother earth is ascending with us like she actually literally is raising her vibration which is a very rare thing in the universe for like the physical element of the planet to go through an ascension like an enlightening process at the same time that the conscious species of the planet is 
because like earth is conscious as well, just as much as we are just in its own way. And so like the multiverse is looking at us right now because they're like, how's that going to go down? You know, like the people are also ascending and also the earth and like, and so this woman that gave me the reading, she was like, the best thing that you can do is like cheer mother earth on, like don't pity her don't disempower yourself like stay in your power and also remind her of her power because she's going to be fine like no matter how much they destroy the nature like she's good you know like she's going to make it through this and whatever you do don't let this like make you smaller or make your voice less because you're feeling sad for like of course have your feelings and process that but like don't let that overwhelm you so that you stop um, making your impact by being yourself and shining your vibration because like for me it's like it like really affects me like um, it like makes me want to cry and I do cry <laughs> and um, and I just look around and I'm like how is no one else feeling this like everyone's just so excited to like destroy nature and like put their little house on and like like replant like a palm tree and act like that's great instead of realizing like the whole natural ecosystem just got destroyed and uh yeah and that's like my experience a lot of time is like this like what the fuck and I think also this is why I've traveled for so much because I'm like it helps me to not lock into a place because then I see what the humans there are doing to it and then I su I feel suffering for the the earth and um and so it's kind of easier to be this like floating wanderer like shedding my light and shining my light and sharing my vibration and then just like moving on before <laughs> I realized that they've like this is kind of how I was in Bali like I used to go there every year and then I was like oh this hurts me too much to see what's happening here I can't I can't shine my light here anymore because it's taking too much of my energy to do this um so just talking to Faraday, I was just like, I'm fully surrendered because we tried to buy the house here and I'm so happy we didn't because, well, if we had bought it, I would have wanted to buy the whole meadow before, but they're owned by different people uh, in the back, like, because there's no point of owning this house if everything around it gets destroyed. Um, and the, anyways, the landlord wouldn't sell it to us because she wants to give it to her daughter as inheritance. And now I'm wondering if that was like a protection because I always believe everything happens the way it's meant to. Like, you know, we can keep renting it forever, but if everything gets destroyed around it, do we even want to live here? And then I was like, do we even want to live on Koh Yong? <laughs> and then I'm like, but I want to have a home. <laughs> so it's just this kind of, but then I think all of this is me putting myself into like this mind fuck because everything will happen when it needs to happen like everything's okay right now and when it's not okay anymore something else will shift so that it will be okay and I just spent like an hour at the coffee shop like journaling and like putting myself back in this like trust knowing this vibration because I feel this struggle between my inner child who feels unsafe and wants to cry and like hide and run away and f like mourn for the nature and for the safe place that this house has been for like so many years and then like my higher self who's like in the knowingness of like it's okay like this is just of the bigger game in the timeline like so much nature has been destroyed and like so much has happened and like we're okay like this is all just a game and just stay in your power stay in your grounding keep shining your light because it's not about what happens it's like how does your soul choose to respond in response to seeing what happens like um are you going to stay in your grounded center and keep keep in the love vibration or are you going to be in the fear or the anger because in the past like when the neighbors were being really loud like it was the first time that I ever felt like I wanted to kill someone like because it was just this piercing metal noise that was going for 12 hours a day. Like it didn't matter where we were in our house, if I had headphones on or earplugs, like it was just coming in and it was also like coming into my body. So even if I had my ears blocking it, it was just like vibrationally going in. And um, I really worked through that of like, okay, in response to the situation, am I going to hate them or want to hurt them? Or am I going to respond with love? And what I ended up landing on was like, I choose to respond with love. And also 
I didn't want to hurt them. I wanted them to know how this felt in my body. So it was like I was calling in like realization for them just because I was like, if they felt how it felt in my body to receive this piercing metal noise for 12 hours a day, then I don't think that they would do this because it would hurt them too much. They would choose a different occupation. And um, it's just ironic that, or, you know, synchronistic that when Faraday and I landed on this, um, this shift in our vibration towards the situation, the situation stopped. So Faraday was asking me this morning, like about this new situation, like does these women come in and wanting to build and destroy the nature right, right next to us. And he was like, what was your response? And I was like, just complete surrender. Just like, I just, as I, I even said this to them, I was like, I just trust. Cause they were like, Oh, are you worried? Like the island's getting overrun. Like this is what the women are saying who are wanting to buy the land right behind us. And I just said, you know, I just trust, I just trust the universe. I just trust wherever I'm meant to be. If I'm not meant to be here anymore, then I'm, then there's another place I'm meant to be. And of course it makes me sad, but I am not going to get angry. I'm not going to, I'm also not going to disempower myself. So I like, I spent like an hour, like at the coffee shop, just like journaling and pumping myself back up and getting back in the knowingness. And then I come home and they're like, they're like putting like stakes in the ground to like mark the land. And the women are just like excitedly running around and like talking to the Thai people. And I just could feel my whole body going back into this like inner child, like constriction. And, um, it's kind of like a freeze mode of, I just want this to go away. And then this is out of my control and something bad that's going to happen. And I don't know what to do. And this is just really hard. I just like, I'm just sharing all of this, that if you're ever in a similar situation, especially when it comes to like nature being destroyed or like seeing humans doing things that are really hurtful to each other or to nature, you are not the only one. Because sometimes I look around and I'm like, am I the only one who feels this way? Because there's so many people who come to the island and they're just in this taking energy of like, I want to consume all the experiences, consume the, the nature and maybe even get a piece of nature for myself and consume it even more and take the nature away and build something. And I'm like, what is their soul's feeling about this? Are they like just not spiritually awake? Because One thing I remember reading one time was that like the difference between someone doing something that you perceive as negative is just them being less spiritually awake because like the more awake you get, the more sensitive you get and the less you're able to like do things that hurt other people or the earth or yourself. And so it's just a matter of, it's not like someone is a bad person. It's just that they're not spiritually awake. (laughs) So it's like this like difference in judgment of like, there really is no judgment because they're just on their journey. But I'm just like, why am I in a timeline with so many people who are on a very different journey than me? Like those people who are just fully destroying the earth and hurting people and hurting themselves and each other. Can't they just shift to a different parallel earth and they can all do that to each other? And I would, I would love, hello, whoever's listening, my higher self, you know, like, all my spirit guides, whoever is listening, I would love to shift to the timeline where we all take care of the earth and we and take care of each other and people show up and they understand that like, sh- like being in a tribe means like having each other's back all the way and like speaking up for each other and like showing up when you need each other and this day-to-day connection of like love and and just being with each other and like observing life together and just doing life together and and where like the kids are safe to run around and play and like my dog can just run everywhere because it's safe and and like I I don't have to worry about the nature because like everyone's in it with me and like protecting the nature and like being in this beautiful symbiotic relationship with mother earth and like understand that she's just as conscious and alive as us i would like to be on that earth please i would like to like i remember bashar said one time that um coming choosing to incarnate down in the timeline right now like choosing to come right now and be alive our souls it's like it's like choosing to be dropped into an insane asylum where the patients have weapons 
So it's like choosing to be dropped into a place of crazy people and they all have guns and knives and you're just like trying to stay alive (laughs) and stay sane and grounded. Uh, And you're in this like constant survival mode. And, and even if you're not in survival mode, it's like this constant, like what the fuck is going on? Um, And uh, yeah, I've had a lot of moments recently where I'm like, um, I know that there's more of us out here and I'm just like, where are they? (laughs) So if you are like this and if you're really like resonating with what I'm saying, I would love it. I'd love to hear from you. I would love for you to comment on this or send me a message on Instagram because, you know, like I'm out here. I'm like sharing it from my heart and I don't have it figured out. (laughs) And also like, I just have so much love for the earth and like for... Um, all the beautiful souls that are on the same timeline as me. I have unconditional love for like everyone else and also they can shift away (laughs) with all their hate and anger and like whatever. And like also I'm here for like those of us to like lead us into this like new earth vibration. Um, One of the elders in my community here on the island calls it the now earth because she says like new is like saying it's like something over there and like the now earth means like it's happening now like okay whatever um so the now earth um yeah I just I just feel like so much in my body and so much in my life and I think in the past it was really overwhelming for me to have these many emotions and now I'm realizing like this is actually what the world needs is less of this cognitive intellectual ability which I also really have and I've like played out that timeline of um, practicing law and being a business consultant and having my own businesses Um, and now I just want to be and I choose to be in my heart and in my body and in my emotions and allowing my inner little girl to like come out and be like what are we doing like, is anyone listening? <laughs> is anyone, like, seeing what we're doing to the earth and, like, to each other? And, like, why why are we hurting each other so much? Like, it makes me really sad. And imagine I've been like this since I was a little girl. (laughs) And so, like, since I was little, I've, like, seen everyone doing everything around me and, like, actually grew up in a really abusive situation. And I was just like, what are you people doing? (laughs) And, like, um, yeah, I just feel like my inner little girl is just like, what the fuck? And, like, why? (laughs) Why do I have to feel so alone in it? And I know I'm not alone. I know because like when I meditate, I, I like feel my spirit family and I know that I'm like super, super protected in the timeline. Otherwise there's like no way I would be here. (laughs) The stories that I've shared on my podcast is like only one fraction of all the things that have happened to me in my timeline. And I'm like really, really grateful for all the protection that I have from spirit because otherwise I would be gone and I'm not just talking like physically I mean like psych like my psyche it's like really a miracle that I'm like sane and grounded and also like emotionally as balanced as I am even though sometimes I feel very unbalanced because of all my sadness I've been having like a lot of um, emotional processing lately and just like a lot of like pain in my womb and I feel like this is like a lot of sadness from from like my childhood and I think it's also just like being a very sensitive awake soul in the timeline plus like I talked to this woman that I um, did a channeling session with she said that like I ch- my soul chose to be born into a 
a situation of abuse and this isn't the first timeline that I have done this but it was like I chose to do this because it reflected not just the abuse of humans but like the abuse that's happening in the collective and also to the earth and that by me like transforming it and like like trans choosing to take this energy upon myself experience it and like transform it into s- to light like the darkness into light then I'm also doing this like for the collective and like for the earth and um I really resonate with that because um you know I, I I feel into like the timelines where like I had a really nice childhood and growing up and I still think I would be helping people and like making an impact but because of the timeline that I chose to come into it's like I have no choice like I know what it feels like to suffer I know what it feels like to be so alone in the world and to be disempowered and I don't want anyone to ever feel like that like you are so powerful And if you're listening to this, I'm like really proud of you. I'm really proud that you like made it this far in the timeline for being like so sensitive and for caring so much about the world and about the earth and about each other. And like you're not alone. And it gets better. It gets a lot better. The timeline is going to get so much better. And I think a big part of that is like when we find each other. I feel like a big part of that is when we find each other and like we start realizing like we're not crazy. (laughs) And I really believe that we're like way more powerful when we're together. Um, Because what they want to make us feel like is that we're crazy and that we're alone and that we should just dim our light. And this is not a time to do that. Like, it's really, like, really important that we, that we shine our light and that we keep going. And, and by that, I mean, just keep following those little whispers of our joy. That's like, hey, go do this thing. Hey, you're interested in this thing. Like, keep pursuing it. Um, what has been coming through for me a lot from many different sources is that I just need to be like I don't need to do physically so much I just need to shine my light and just be because like me being myself in the timeline is already activating so many people and um, that's why I'm like making a podcast right now even though I'm like really emotional (laughs) Because normally I was like, oh, I want to make a podcast just to like pump people up when I'm in my positive energy. And then I'm like, honestly, this is what the feminine needs to do right now is share their emotions, especially when they are feeling vulnerable and sad and all of the things, because this is so activating to people around us. Like, I feel like women, we share our emotions when we're in our anger because like this is also a very masculine thing to do. Like men are given the box of only sharing anger. It's like happy, happy anger. And women, I feel like have fallen into that just by following the masculine in what they're expressing. And so like women are like keeping themselves suppressed and then when they finally let it out it just comes out in this like really huge anger and this is what I call my dragon energy and you know there's a place for that especially when you're like feeling unsafe and you need to get someone to like fuck off and I really feel like we should speak up for that more as women when we're feeling in those moments of like feeling really unsafe and also at the same time I feel like it's way more powerful to be soft in our emotions and share those soft emotions because like yeah I can get really angry and like yell at people right now about the nature of situation or I can just share vulnerably from my heart how it makes me feel and cry and like which one is gonna really affect people's hearts more you know like is it gonna be me the angry Brittany or like the vulnerable 
like sad Brittany um because me showing my emotions right now is not me disempowering it's not I just really want to make a point that like me being in my emotions and sharing them so openly and vulnerably I do not feel less empowered by doing that I feel actually more in my power because I'm just being real this is just me being real and I feel like it takes a lot of bravery to and like courage to like be real especially when you don't know how the timeline's going to play out and you're just choosing to trust you're choosing to be in the knowingness and also allow your body to process all the emotions <laughs> that don't feel good in that moment um Ooh, yeah, so there's a lot. This is like where I'm at. This felt really nice to like just get this out and share this. So thank you guys for listening. I have like a lot of people asking me questions right now. So I opened it up. I'm doing a couple um, Zoom call slots. So if people want to do like a coaching session with me or a channeling session or a human design session, I'm opening five slots. So reach out to me on Instagram if you want the details of that bunch of them already gone but um I just have like a high quantity of people reaching out and I realize like maybe the collective like needs needs this right now and I'm happy to show up if that's the need um I have some other things like so some of you have reached out and asked questions and I wanted to respond to some of these um it's like completely unrelated to everything I just talked about um but we're gonna do it because like what the fuck who cares like this is my podcast and we can go all over the place that is very feminine and flowy um one realization I wanted to share with you all is that um so just talking about like the feminine and like what does it mean to be in our power because I feel like I feel like a lot of women have felt so disempowered in their life, like me also included uh, for a big part of my life, that um, the idea of being in our power was was meant that we could do, th we could be an independent individual. Like I can take care of myself. I can pay for myself. I can do all the 3D things myself. I don't need a man to do this because in the past, having a man involved equaled me giving up my power in some way me feeling disempowered like th and this was an actual lived experience for me so i i think this is why i went into studying law and practicing law and um and also like just being very focused in business first in my life and like and choosing to um have my financial security as something that was really important to me to like to to take care of first because my dad growing up was so controlling about money like he would use he had we had very little money in the beginning of my life and then we had a lot of money so it was like very like in america we call it rags to riches story which means like you were very poor and then suddenly you had a ton of money i experienced this timeline within like five years of my childhood um because my dad had cancer and then we had we had like no money and then suddenly he owned a, a very successful company and we had like we moved into like a gated community with like mansions and it was just like such a trip of an adventure to go through um psychologically but at the same time I never felt very empowered in it because my dad was so controlling he would use material things like he would be abusive to us and then take us on a shopping spree to make up. So it was like it felt very like unsafe to enjoy the financial success. And even like when my mom wanted to get a job just so she had her own money, my dad would take her paycheck and like be in control of what money she had. And it just all felt very disempowering. So for me, I wanted to make sure that I could take care of myself. And I feel like this is like also a very lived experience for a lot of women 
whether it's like that straight up, like my timeline is like the most extreme in a lot of ways, but I feel like the themes that are played out are very similar for what a lot of women experience in the timeline. So, um, when it comes to like, you know, I've done a lot of my own journey of what is it, what, why, what do I actually want out of my relationship with a man and like how do I want them to show up like what is actually nourishing for me what do I need out of a relationship like otherwise I could just be by myself you know and have like friends with benefits with people and I was like no I want to I would love to so basically I proved to myself that I could take care of myself and and like financially and then I was like what do I actually want and um and 30 and I have landed in the in the dynamic of like, yeah, like we both are very balanced in taking care of 3D things and emotional things and spiritual things together. Like, but I would say that he takes care of physical things, like actually like goes out and gets stuff that we need for the house and like, you know, puts things on his to-do list to fix on the house. And like these, these are like very small examples, but I, I feel that this is, something really important because then I, I, it allows me space to, um, be more in my emotional reality, which is like what holds the, the feeling good of being at home. It's like he helps take care of the home physically and make sure that we pay for the house for the year. And that like, he talks to the landlord and like does all these things. And then like, I, buy us plants and like I mean I tell him that I want to buy plants we buy it together but like I like water them I make make sure the house is cozy and like he's actually very good at cleaning the house um thank you Faraday for being so clean but like um what I'm trying to say is that he's showing up in this way of like taking care of physical things and this might sound very gender normative of like our dynamic like what the fuck aren't they supposed to be enlightened like isn't this dumb to be falling into these gender norms and what I'll tell you is like it goes like full circle like I I have experienced all of it where I've like I am a fully empowered woman I can do everything on my own I had the collective our home here for years by myself taking care of everything and I just got so tired I was like taking like having a house a three bedroom three bed bathroom villa in an island in Thailand is a lot to take care of by yourself like it's just like um they say that like homes here are like living species like if you don't keep up with it like it will deteriorate very fast like the jungle will take it back so it takes a lot of energy and i was also running parties running a community like having a whole friend group like traveling like it was just having a dog it was like a whole thing and having a partner to take care of all those things with it gives me a lot more space to be in my feminine and just be in my coziness which means that then I am able to create a lot of coziness for him and ask him how he's feeling and make sure he feels yummy on the inside. It's like he takes care of the outside, so then I can make sure that we take care of the inside of us, like our emotional reality. And when you have like done all of the timelines of being empowered in yourself as an individual, and then I've been in partnerships where I wasn't, like I was taking care of the physical stuff a lot and it didn't feel that great. Like I can do all of it, but it didn't actually leave me that much space to like be in my body and then to land in this relationship. It just feels really good. And I'm trying to let you know this, like especially the women who are listening to this, that um, for me, this is like, this is what being in my power is now is like, yeah, I can take care of myself and also it's so much nicer to have a partner who wants to take care of me, chooses to take care of me. And we have a, like a very healthy, you know, symbiotic relationship where we take care of each other in different ways. And we're both in our power and individuals. And it allows me for me being in my power now is not just doing everything on my own. It's having the space to be in my softness. It's having the space to like, be gentle and flowy and wake up and have all these plans for the day and decide fuck them I'm just gonna go swim in the ocean and then take a bath and then take a nap 
And that's just what I'm doing today. Like I've done that for the last couple of days because I've been really in my emotions. And Faraday's just like handling stuff and making food and taking care of the dog and like allowing me this space to just fully unfold into my emotional reality. And this makes it so that one, I feel really yummy in my body and I'm able to go into this like dark void of emotions and this is where like new creation is made like this is the moon energy of just being like fully in the darkness they call it night energy and this is what brings all the juiciness into the light and I noticed this really coming up for me in like a because there's layers to this I feel like in our everyday life here on the island we are really we've like worked it out in a dynamic that feels really healthy and like um, we're both feeling really good about it. And then when we went to Samui recently, we went to the next island over um, because I need to get my IUD, my birth control replaced. And um, (laughs) it's just, I was really laughing at myself because um, I was telling Faraday like, hey, I would really love it if you, because the, there's a there's also a whole other dynamic because like I've, I've lived in Thailand for eight years so there's a, and I speak some Thai. So like there's this dynamic of like when we were in Germany, like Faraday, you know, would call the electric company or the internet company because he speaks German and, the, you know, the apartment is under his name and like all these things. So there's like a lot of times where here if we're in like a new situation, like I will handle it because I can understand a lot of Thai and... I just kind of know the culture and like have been in a lot of situations here in Thailand. So I kind of like know how things work. But when we went to Samui, I really wanted to be in my feminine because I was like, I'm, I'm going to be in a very potentially painful like per- procedure and I really need a lot of space so that I can just flow with this and allow myself to process this. And Faraday was like, yeah, yeah, I'll take care of things. I can handle it. And then what I noticed myself doing is like we would get to the boat stand and like he would park the bike and I would just run off and like run up to the boat lady and get our tickets. And then we'd be like walking the boat and he's talking about something and I'm like running ahead because I'm like, we need to figure out what boat we are on. Like, And then we get to, you know, the place where we're checking in to stay at the the villa we're going to stay at. And, so we, and he's just barely like getting off the bike. And I'm like running ahead to like check in for us and talk to the lady. And they were supposed to clean our villa and it wasn't clean. And I got really upset and I was like talking to them in Thai and Burmese and Faraday's just standing there. And I'm like, why aren't you helping? And he's like, you have literally given me no space or time to like help anything. Like, why don't you just sit down? Why don't you just go in the pool? Let me take care of this. And I had this whole reaction because it was like all of this frustration built up because I actually didn't want to take care of any of these things. And I was like projecting all of this frustration onto him. And he was like really frustrated because he was like, you haven't given me any space to actually help. You just like, he's like, I literally would have to run faster than you if I wanted to help in these situations because you're physically moving so fast to jump in and take care of them and I had a big emotional reaction we had a big fight and then I was like I felt he left he left to go get us food which I really appreciated and it also gave me sometimes I just need space like away from the person and like in my own energy to feel myself and I got in the pool and I calmed down and I was like oh my god he's actually right (laughs) like yeah, of course, he could have, like, spoke up a lot sooner and been like, hey, hey, I noticed you're taking care of things. You, I want to take care of them. Let, let me do it. Like, he kind of waited for me to blow up before he said anything. Um, and at the same time, it's like it's like a chicken and egg. Like, like which, which one comes first? Like, I could be upset at him for not speaking up or I could just step back and see if he shows up. So I could get up angry at him or I could just test it and just literally sit down and slow down and see if he actually takes care of things so then the rest of the weekend also I had a procedure that day so I was really in a lot of pain and the rest of the time we were there I was just like okay I surrender like and I think there's also this part of us women who are like I have figured out how to take care of myself so well 
is it really possible for a man to take care of me better than how I'm going to take care of myself? And in my head, a lot of times I'm like, no, I really take care of myself better. Like in a way that I like more, it feels better in my body. And, and then I was thinking, yeah, but then you're just going to be tired all the time and like, fuck that, you know? And also like you have to give men the chance to show up for you and every time they get better and better and then do it in a way that feels better in your body. And so, yeah, I just wanted to honor that. that like there, I think there is some resistance also because I'm just like, I'm really good at this. And yeah, of course we can be good at it, but it takes energy when we could just be <sighs> just like in our flowy, feminine, like softness. That's what I'm trying to say is like, yes, we... I feel like as a collective, and this is an individual experience, if you need to prove to yourself that you can take care of yourself, I totally get that. But I feel like as a collective, we're kind of hitting this point where like women have proven, yeah, they can work as hard as as men. Yeah, they can intellectually be as, as strong as men and physically, you know, in a lot of ways they can be as strong as men or whatever. But it's like, do we want to? Do we want to compete on that level? I don't want to compete with men in these ways, these physical ways. I would love to just be in my softness. Like for me, that is my power. And when I need to step in and be in my masculine power and like use my dragon energy and like, you know, pop some whatever. I was about to go ghetto, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm just mean that when I need to use this sharp sword of my masculine energy through my words or through my energy, I can do it. And also it takes a lot of my energy. So like, why not allow my beautiful masculine counterpart to take care of these things for me? (sighs) So I would, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Like that was like a big learning lesson for me and just yeah. So I've been creating a lot more space for Faraday to like take care of things and asking him to help me take care of things physically more. And it's really feeling good in my body. And I think like for the men who are listening to this, I just want to say that like we as women like really need this, even if like we don't say it. Um, I was talking to someone at one of the play parties recently to a guy and he was like saying, he's like, cause I was saying kind of all of this to him and he was like, I really want you to say this to women because I feel like I agree. And like, as a man, I would love to just show up. He's, he was married. He's like, I would love to show up for my wife more. Um, but like, I feel like she has so much resistance when I want to just take care of things so that she can just, you know, just rest and chill and, and feel yummy in her body and just not have to do it. Like, let me do it for you. I want to do this. I want to show up for you. And all they need is like appreciation. Like, thank you for doing that. I really love you. And I appreciate you. Like, that's all they need. They just want to know that their existence is worthy of something. And for men, like, it's so beautiful to be appreciated by the feminine. It's so, it means so much to the masculine that like the feminine, like really values them. And it means a lot that they're in the feminine's life. And, If you're a woman, please appreciate all the men around you for what they are doing. And here's a little tip. The more you appreciate them, the more they're going to want to show up for you and do things for you because, and you don't do this because you can get more out of them. You do this because you genuinely appreciate them and love them and am grateful for their existence in your life, you know? And it's just like this, it's like this beautiful circle of life that just keeps happening. And this is something I feel like is being called into balance right now like we went from one extreme of like feminine being very disempowered and then we went to the other extreme of the feminine proving that they can be in their power and I fully support this I feel like the feminine like yeah hello we are just as amazing as men we are just as powerful as men and now it's like balance in the middle of like yeah, I am just as powerful as a man, but I don't want to be powerful in a masculine way. I want to be powerful in my feminine way, which equals me allowing myself to have space to explore my emotional reality because like this is the huge power of the feminine is like our softness and our able to access our emotions in the moment can like move mountains more than our anger at something. 
because I will tell you that like when I am in my vulnerability and crying and like really in my softness of my emotions, like Faraday is like, what can I do? I need to make you feel better. Like I love you. And it's like so activating for the collective when feminine are in their soft, vulnerable emotions. And I'm not saying that you need to do this all the time. I'm just saying when you have them to let them out to the people around you in whatever way feels good for you, because this is really what we need as a collective because we all have, so it, it, it like creates a safe space for men to feel their feelings because men have feelings just like women do. They might have a, a less of a range of feelings. Like women maybe have a wider range and more depth, but men have feelings. And when women are not, giving themselves space, creating space for themselves to be in their feelings. Men feel even less like it's okay to be in their feelings. And so if you're a woman, I really invite you to be as expressive as you need to, want to with your feelings and your emotional reality to the people in your life that you feel safe. And it also create space for the masculine to feel their feelings because like men need this they deserve this just as much as we do you know like a lot of men are only given the the space to feel anger or happiness um and in very limited time slots it's like you know friday on the third you can feel angry for 10 minutes but don't feel too angry because you might hurt people you know like i know with fair day there was a huge segment of our relationship where he was just like yeah I, I people are already kind of scared of me like energetically and I'm so he was like saying I'm so careful to not show my anger because I don't want to scare people or hurt people and I was like yeah but you need to let if you're actually feeling angry you need to let it out and there was like some moments where he was really angry or frustrated about situations and I said go scream like yell do whatever you need to do hit a pillow whatever and he was like oh, I don't want to, I don't want to. And I was like, I'm here, do it. Like, I will witness you. And he was like, rah, rah, and like letting it all out. And then I was like, how does that feel? And he's like, wow, it feels good. <laughs> and so this is what we can do. Like as a feminine, we can be like, yeah, it's not a big deal. Just like let your emotions out. They don't need to be anything negative. It doesn't mean to, mean to be anything. It's just, it's just energy moving through our body. And the more that we can create space for this, the more we can feel alive in the timeline because we are here to experience all of this as a soul we chose to come down into these physical bodies to have a lived experience so the more that you can allow yourself to live an experience the more you're going to feel fulfilled and alive in your life like so many people are constricting themselves so much in their lives that they don't even feel alive. And then they're probably going to die and have this life review of like, wow, I really didn't do that much. I didn't grow or experience that much because I was so afraid to feel or to live or to disappoint. It's like, oh my God, just fuck it all up. Like, like don't be afraid to ruffle some feathers to make some make some noise while you're like figuring yourself out like this is what I I want to say also to women is that we have <laughs> suppressed our dark emotions for so long that when they come out like a lot of times they're very scary to people around us especially men because they are not used to uh, they do not have the capacity to handle these big emotions and they're not used to even like understanding that those exist in the timeline because it's just like it's been suppressed for so long and so I have and I'm like moon and Scorpio right so this is like very intense waters of deep emotional reality and I've spent a lot of my life worried that I was too much for people around me like I would just hide my emotions or I would go into the forest and like scream and let them out you know and like cry for a whole day and just like let myself be in my emotions and I would feel so good when I would do this but I was like realizing I want to be able to do this <laughs> in a more integrated way on a regular basis without having to bottle it up. And what I realized was like, oh, like I need to be a leader in this of like, it's okay to have these deep, intense emotions and you're still loved and accepted and it's okay to cry and to not know what's going on and to feel connected in that void of 
not of like of the uncertain I think the the point of life is not to understand what's happening all the time it's to feel connected on the journey of the discovery it's like I don't know what's going on but we're in it together and that's all that matters and I feel like the more that all of us women come together with each other this is why I organize a lot of women's circles and I have parts that have segments in my women's circles where we're literally screaming into pillows and witnessing each other being in our emotions and you can tell the shift in the energy of the room of everyone before being like oh my god everything's fine and like yeah it's okay and then and then the shift in the energy after where they're really in their power and they're just like yeah i got some fucking dark emotions and it's okay like i'm this is me being in my power is also just being like Wah! you know and like it's okay and I didn't scare anyone away and if anything I feel more connected to people because I allowed myself to have these emotions so if your friend so say I'm just going to put this situation out there if you have a girlfriend and she's like really upset I really invite you to tell her to invite her to scream like maybe scream into a pillow if or into the jungle like scream in a way that you're not going to like you know negatively affect other people around you but I'll also create space where you can do this. And then it's so powerful to be witnessed in this because we have this very deep programming that when I have a negative emotion, it equals disconnection. So if you witness someone in this and you are staying connected to them, it really heals this, not just for you guys, but for the whole collective. This is like everything that we do affects the mass consciousness, just so you guys know. Um, So if you are allowing yourself space to feel your emotions, let this energy go through your body. And then all you have to do if you create the space for your friend is to say, thank you for sharing. You don't need to comment on their emotional reaction. You don't need to, I mean, if they want to share, that's one thing. But this is also something that we can heal because a lot of times when we do have emotions, people are like, oh my God, stop having emotions. I need to help you and give you advice and fix it. And what if we just created space for our emotions without needing to fix it and just realize it's just energy going through our body and we can just feel it and then just love each other for feeling it, knowing that it's like all going to be okay and everything's working out in the end. Ooh, there's a lot. I love all of you. I'm here. I'm going to start making a lot more podcasts in this way where I'm, this is me being, this is, this is the version of me that all of my real friends get. And I'm just, I think I'm going to start, I know I choose that I am making these more like this because this is really nourishing for me <laughs> to share this because I am also emotionally processing like the beginning when I shared about the nature and everything I was really upset and just sharing it and you saw me sharing my emotions having an emotional reaction nothing broke everything's okay if anything I feel so much better because now it is the energy has moved through me and I feel like Faraday said something just now before I started the podcast he was like right now this is a spiritual warfare that we're having a lot of the the games that are being played out in the collective is not physical. It's in our minds. It's in our hearts. It's in our energy body. So it's, for instance, like, yeah, something happens in the physical, but the real game that's being played is how are you going to respond in your energy body? How are you going to respond in your soul? Are you going to be upset about this? Are you going to let it disempower you? And for me, this is why he's like, he's like making podcasts and sharing. And I'm encouraging all of you to also share as much as possible in whatever way feels safe for you. Sharing your vibration and shining your light is the biggest impact that we can have. Not that you need to go out and like do anything crazy. It's just like literally sharing like just how I'm doing now. Like, hey, you're doing great. Or this is my experience. This is my story. Because the more that we realize that we are connected and that we're all in this together, the more powerful we are. And this is the game that we're playing is to keep going and to keep our vibrations shining strong, even when we see so much negativity and fear and destruction happening around us. Whew. Okay. Um, the last thing I'll share is uh, someone that I did a reading for recently. I'm going to give a shout out to her. She's an amazing woman in Egypt. So she's in Egypt and she wrote me again and she was like, hey, can you please make a podcast to tell us 
How do you live fully in your feminine and express your sexuality, even though there are men who would want to eat you with their looks as if you're a piece of cake? This is a very good question. So she, this woman comes from a Muslim background and she's choosing to go into her own path of spirituality instead of just being the religion, which is, again, reclaiming her sexuality because in Egypt it's either you're a virgin or they call it a non-virgin. And if you, basically, if you're not a virgin anymore, like the men there view you as just like a piece of meat and you're just down to fuck all the time, which is like, what a weird reality bubble. Those Like I feel... I'm not going to say I feel bad for her, but like that is not a, I do not prefer that reality. (laughs) That would feel very intense in my body. And then I remind myself that we're all strategically placed around the world to like shine our lights and like lock in this like energy grid into the system. So she is there as like a native Egyptian to lock in this energy there and shine her light and be this beacon of light for Egyptian women and for like Muslim people who are Muslim so that they can see like, oh, that's a possible timeline that I could travel down, you know? So um, my response to this question is, it's like a really, (laughs) this is what I would say that there is times when you need to be in your masculine energy and times when you need to be in your feminine energy. And um, in situations where, um, I mean, I'm not sure how physically unsafe it is in Egypt because like for instance in in India when I was in India if you like smile back at a man like they will come literally come into your vortex like I remember being in a temple in India by myself and I went into like a small temple and like 10 men followed me in and they were all like cornering me in the temple like hey can we take your photo but this is like their way of kind of like starting a conversation with you and gang rape is like really powerful in it's like this really interesting energy that takes over men in India where they just like all like they're so suppressed in their sexuality where they just want to like jump on a woman. And this happens a lot, like in the middle of the daytime in public, men will just like gang rape a woman. Um, and I knew about this already. And so when I was in India, I had my masculine energy on very strong where I was like, no, thank you. And then when they would come closer, I would just be like, hey, get out of my face. Like, fuck off. Like, that was my energy. I didn't a lot of times say, like, fuck off. I didn't need to, but I was just like, leave me alone. And my energy was like, this is um, something I want to say is that when you are in a situation where you feel unsafe physically, the best way that I have found to... um to react so that the person just a lot of people um, a lot of bullies or people who are victimizing someone they want to go after someone who is like the easy prey so they want to go after someone who's like this like like you know limp little lamb that's just like ah I don't know and so if you give off the energy of like I will fuck you up and then if they in- still interact with you and then you give off this energy of like I will fuck you up and I'm batshit crazy a lot of times I would say I, I have never had a situation where I've been attacked farther than that point because they just are like, okay, bye. Like I'm going to go try and, you know, attack someone else who is just like more easy to just jump on or whatever. Um, so in response to this conversation though, I feel like this woman in Egypt is more saying like, it's not like they're going to physically attack me. It's just this like, it's just, you know, the thing with, with energy is like sexual energy all of our energy, emotional energy, sexual energy, it can go out and um, interact with you without the person ever saying anything to you, without them ever touching you. So what she's basically experiences, experiencing is like these men's like sexual energy coming at her, right? And she's like, I do not want to receive your sexual energy, like fuck off. And when I lived in New York City, this happened to me a lot. Like, it's very normal for, like, construction workers in New York to just yell at women and just be like, hey, baby, come over here. Like, you're so sexy. And it's, like, this group of, like, 50 of them, and you're, like, this one girl, like, walking down an alleyway, and that can feel really unsafe. But at least in New York City, like, the laws, the police, the actual military system is protecting women a lot more than I feel like in Arab countries or, like, in India. Um, so if you feel physically safe, I think the best way to handle that energy, I've actually found the best way a lot of women will not agree with me on this. Like a lot of women will get in the anger 
and they will just be like, um, fuck off. And I feel like if you're feeling physically unsafe, yes, you should be in that, that energy. But that energy takes energy out of me to be in because it's not natural for me to be in this like, like it takes energy to put your guard up and be on your masculine, right? And so what I have found is when I don't feel physically unsafe, like say someone, like I dealt with this a lot in Italy, like Italian men and also in Brazil. Oh my God. Italian men and Brazilian men love me. I don't know what it is. And they would come up to me all the time, like in the street, like, oh my God, your eyes are so beautiful. Your hair is so red. Oh my God, you're so beautiful. And my reaction would be to be in my soft, powerful feminine. This is very new for a lot of men to receive. And so it can be very confusing for them. But I feel like this is also doing work for the collective. And I'll give you an example of what this means. Like when a man will come up to me in the street and be like, you are so beautiful. Or, you know, like, oh, like, like I just feel like I, especially in Brazil, like the men there are so sexual and a lot of them are really beautiful. Anyways, but if I was like, no, I don't, (laughs) I don't want this. What I would, what my energy back would be like, thank you so much. I really appreciate being seen by you, but I'm good. And so I would stay in my feminine energy and in my softness. And also I would have healthy boundaries. And so this is something to play around with. Um, Again, I'm not sure how safe it is in Egypt, but you could just shine your light like don't let it dim you and stay in your feminine power because a lot of times it's men who are just not used to a woman being in their sexual power in their feminine power in their softness and just shining they're used to them being subjugated to this box of virgin or married woman or whore which is like i can just fuck her but she means nothing in the collective that's what a lot of men believe um And so to be this anomaly, this like new species, it's like this, you're like this wild, feminine, (laughs) beautiful goddess in the wild. And they're just like, ah. And so you can get angry at them for being like, ah. Or you could be like, yeah, okay, uh, I see you. And so my reaction is to just shine my light even brighter. And so um, like when men, when men, you know, would give me this energy, I find it actually to be very empowering to allow myself to receive this energy and transmute it into something that is pure because they're giving this sexual energy of like, I want to fuck you and I receive it in my body and I transmute it into something where I'm like, yeah, I know I'm beautiful. I know I'm sexy. Thank you so much for seeing me. And no, I don't want anything back. So like, say men are giving you this sexual energy when you're walking past and they're like giving you eyes. If you feel safe physically, like they're not going to come at you for smiling at them. I feel like it would be a really interesting experiment to be like, I'm just going to receive, you can choose how you want to receive it. I'm just going to receive this in an empowering way and just be like, and just smile and just be like, yeah, I know I'm fucking a goddess, you know, like I'm, I'm so badass. And without any expectation that that equals anything further with them and then if they try to engage further because you smiled at them and for them that means an invitation you just kindly say no thank you have a good day and then they're just going to be even more confused and i fucking love confusing people because that means growth for them that means realization that means something new um So again, all of this is like under the context if you feel safe and if you're up for it because I think that I have also done the other direction where I just get really angry. I like hide myself. There was a whole chunk in my life where I just wanted to make myself less beautiful because I used to do a lot of modeling in my late teens, early 20s. And I like cut, I had hair all the way down to my hips, like really long, like lush mermaid locks. And I just cut it all off into like a pixie haircut, like a boy's haircut, because I was, and a lot of women do this because they're like, I just don't want to be seen. Like I want to, I don't want to be commodified. I don't want to be this like object that can be purchased and used and, you know, disposed of. I want to be a soul in the timeline that is appreciated for who I am on the inside, not just for who I am on the outside. So I've gone through that whole thing and I've come full circle to the fact that it is really beautiful to be seen and to be witnessed in our beauty. And this is what the feminine thrives off of and it gives us energy. And I understand if it's coming at us in a a gross, like 
dirty sexual energy, but girl, we are so fucking powerful as women. We can transmute that shit and turn it into something even more powerful by shining our light even brighter. So I hope this helps. This is my take on it. Please transmute that into whatever feels good for you. And I'm sending you guys all so much love and I hope you have an amazing day. I think Ferdy and I are going to go to the waterfall now and get away from all of the commotion that is happening in our backyard and just trust the universe. And I love you and I will see you in the next podcast. Bye.